Have you ever thought about rabbit rearing and having your own rabbit business? Have you thought about feed making using local raw materials? Well, if you haven't, you will surely learn about it in this week's Bridges program. This week, we are on location at the home of the Barbados Ruminant Farm Services at Graham Hall Christchurch, where we learn more about the program. I am Tamisha Doughty, and with me is Liam Paris Boyne. First, we'll visit with Acting Principal Youth Development Officer, Mrs. Andrea Titus, who heads the Youth Development Programme in the Division of Youth Affairs and learn more about its work across Barbadian communities. The Youth Development Programme is about addressing the needs, aspirations of the young persons here in Barbados. We're here to help them to reach their fullest potential. The aim of the Youth Development Programme is about developing young persons between the ages of 9 to 29 and we look and we do this whether it is culturally, socially or economically. As it relates to the vision of the Youth Development Programme, it is about youth engagement, it's about youth empowerment, it's about developing young persons so that they are fully engaged in their various communities across Barbados. We also have a mission, and the mission of the Youth Development Program, it is about increasing empowerment. It's about enhancing skills development. It's about reducing violence and crime. It's about boosting employability and employment. Um, we also, we don't work in silos. We work in collaboration with other government agencies, we also work with non-governmental agencies and we also work with international agencies as well. Here within the Ministry we have a staffing of about 32 field officers in addition to three senior youth commissioners. Now the Barbados is broken down into three zones. We have the Northern Zone, the Southern Zone and we also have the Central Zone. Now within these districts, we have approximately about 2,500 persons within each district which the officers are responsible for. Within the Youth Development Program, there are various activities that are engaged um, so that we can accomplish our goals and objectives. We are responsible for the National Summer Camp Program. We're also responsible for the National Cultural Training Program. There's also a sports training program. We also develop community projects and we, this is, we take a needs-based approach with our community projects where we basically get feedback from the various groups and communities so that they can inform the project. It is more of a bottoms-up approach for our community projects. Now we also work with youth and community groups as well. We offer capacity building training for the leaders and we also provide secretarial services as well. We also offer a financial assistance to these groups and individuals um, as well. Some key organizations, we work with the Barbados Youth Development Council, the Girl Guides Association. We also work with the um, Duke of Edinburgh scheme and we also work with the Nature um, Fun Ranch as well. We, we, as I had indicated earlier, we are a research-led organization and we do research at the community level and we also do research within the various schools as well. So we have the, we conduct the School Divas Traces Survey and currently we're actually conducting the National Youth Survey. Now, we also know that young persons are interested in developing themselves politically as well, and we also have the National Youth Parliament. 
happens. We also have the National Youth Policy and the National Youth Policy is actually the framework in which guides what we do here um, within the ministry. The Youth Development Program is here to address the needs of young persons. We are here to address your issues and concerns of the Barbadian youth. We are here to make sure that you reach your fullest potential. The Youth Development Program is for the youth and all about the youth. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment is calling all young people in Barbados between the ages of 16 and 29 to participate in its National Youth Survey. The survey, which runs from April to October 2023, seeks to gain insight into the interests, aspirations and needs of Barbadian youth. Young people are encouraged to engage the youth commissioners when they visit and make their voices heard. For more information, call 535-3835 or email sharon.bishop at barbados.gov.bb. In Barbados, we have many talented young persons. Earlier this year, the Ministry of Youth Affairs extended an invitation to interested youth to participate in its Teen MC program. The program is a two-part initiative for youth to present and share their skills and talent. The second is the Youth News program. Let's take a look. I'm Peter Aline. I am a broadcaster. I am an actress and I've been in the business now for over 40 years. The Ministry of Youth recognized that there's a need for a new cadre of Masters of Ceremonies. We've had some brilliant ones over the years and you know time has come now where it's time for the young people to to step up and, and, and move forward in that area. And so they decided to come up with a program. It's the Teen MC program. We're looking at teens, basically, at the moment, so that we're training them, getting them involved in the art, the craft of being an MC, and then hopefully, as they get more experienced, they can take over and become the new face of MCing in Barbados. I think that's a brilliant. It's been a learning experience for me as well to see where the youth are focused these days, how they do things. You know, they reach for their digital um, accessories a little quicker than I do. And it's all there. The, the information is immediate. And so it's easy for you to do quick research on something. Um, you're not stumped like we used to be because, you know, we really didn't have phones and that to click on and get information um, really quickly. Looking at presentation, at style, at being comfortable with who you are as a person, quite a number of them are shy. So they're not accustomed to coming out and speaking in public. So that's one of the things that we've had to we've had to work on. We've had some fun and for them some surprises along the way. Now we're at the stage where it's practice. Different types of shows, different types of running orders. How do you present? How do you introduce? How do you as an MC make that event a really great event by you know, bigging up the people and uplifting them and making them feel really good about themselves, which is one of the jobs of an MC. It's not an easy job, not by any stretch of the imagination, but we're having fun. When these get older and, and they've done it really, really well, I hope that they are an inspiration to others to come forward. Um, homework and practice and a sense of self is very important and if you can imagine Matt Fingal at age 13 learning to be what he is now think of that impact um, as a member of the audience to see someone 
with that kind of style and that type of experience coming forward from out of a group of young people as we were looking for the train and produce the next best looking forward to well, I found the program through my mother and she actually sent it to me the night before the program and I saw it and I liked it and she was like, but you cannot go, it's like the night before I was like, I'm going because this is a way for me to build my confidence and to gain the experience that I might need in the future. I learned about the program through club at school I mean it's called at high school college it's called college liberators and it was just a piece of information sent out in the Google classroom so I saw it um, I saw that it was interesting I wanted to get more into the space anyway of public speaking doing MC and so I just thought it would be perfect for me to be involved in the program everyone was really kind and they really taught us that it doesn't really matter the question that we ask. No matter how small or big it is, it's important. So we could have asked anything from how to do this or where we're supposed to be meeting. Simple questions that you might think are dumb or in a, in important, not important. We can ask them. In my opinion, it's been, the whole team and C program has been very inclusive. Us working with Miss Aline, she's been a very good mentor. She's allowed us to express ourselves and we just have fun in training. No credit, no data, no Wi Fi, no problem. The Community Development Department has you covered. Free wireless internet access at community centers across the island. The Community Development Department, serving our communities. For many years, there has been the constant belief that our young men are at risk. But is this true? One Barbadian, Winston Cumberbatch, stepped forward in response to this belief and created the Mr. Executive Business and Gentleman's Challenge. This program helps in the development of young men by using various challenges. Let's learn more about this program. There was a time in Barbados that the phrase men in crisis was on everyone's lips. Some still believe this today. However, the reality is that society contributed to that notion decades before, as boys were expected to be the ones pitching marbles and giving trouble while the girls remained at home, dressing dolls and reading books. No wonder many of our boys shied away from studying hard at school as the girls rose to the top of the class. This, of course, later resulted in young women filling the majority of seats in tertiary institutions on evenings, while many young men spent their evenings and nights on the blocks. Now, as a teacher for over 40 years at the only all boys school in Barbados, St. Anna's Boys, I saw this played out firsthand, and I was moved in 2017 to create the Mr. Executive's Business and Gentleman's Challenge. To help our boys refocus and discover their true potential as young entrepreneurs and respected gentlemen. Now the key elements in each stage of the challenge are Stage 1, which is the preliminary round The $20 challenge, which is facilitated by the Barbados Entrepreneurship Foundation A dress inspection and a speech on a chosen topic Stage 2, which is the final pageant, includes a day on the job at their mentor's workplace the Leadership or Community Project, facilitated by the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. And then there's the Job Interview, the Business Attire Display, the CEO Project Pitch, which is a public speaking segment, and the very popular The Date, where they demonstrate chivalry and good table etiquette as they take a lady to a restaurant. Now the objectives of the challenge are, one, to cultivate positive business and ethics, and entrepreneurial skills within our boys, two, to equip them for the world of work, enabling them to make a positive contribution to society, and three, to help them become gentlemen in their attitudes, deportment, and relationships with women. 
Throughout the entire process, participants grow in confidence, increase their self-esteem, and develop gentlemanly traits. Now, through the business training and business development that they are all go through, they gain valuable knowledge and experience in entrepreneurship and develop their own businesses. Participants also receive scholarships for post-secondary education and summer internships with sponsoring companies. Some even gain full employment after leaving school. Now, my vision is to see young men from all secondary schools in Barbados participating in the challenge at some stage. Thankfully, the vis this vision is also shared by the Chief Education Officer, who requested that this year, other schools got involved. Hence, this year is the first inter-school challenge involving Erlesley, Graydon Seeley, Arlene Lodge, and St. Leonard's. I also hope to see the Mr. Executive Challenge extended to other countries, both regionally and internationally. The support of four government ministries this year, the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, the Ministry of Energy and Business, the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, and the Minister of State in the Office of the Attorney General, along with other sponsoring companies, has laid the foundation for this to become a reality. With the preliminary round, the $20 challenge completed, the five finalists, to Shane Dawson from Lodge, Dante Peters from Marysley, Andrea Lashley Coppin from Aline, Christian Nicholas from the Graydon City School, and Michael Tate from St. Leonard's are right now preparing for the finals pageant, which will be held at the St. Leonard's Boys School Auditorium on the 3rd of September. Tickets will be available at each of the participating schools and other locations, which will be announced and will be available as from as early as July. My name is Fido Blackman and I'm the current winner of the Mr. Executive Challenge of 2022. Well, at first, I was not really interested in the challenge, but then from the motivation of my father and mother, I say maybe I'll go for the experience, for the challenge, because me as an individual, I like a challenge. Whether big or small, a challenge is a challenge, and there's going to be experience and progress for any challenge that you get. Working with team members, I'm going to start there. Everyone has their own personality, their own traits, and to work along with someone that, let's per se, your traits and personalities, they sort of mix, but there's still some difference. It's gonna be a bit of a drag because everyone is gonna be trying their own ideas, their own parts, and then you have to find some way to incorporate all of them into the mix. Um, the segments of the final parts, those were the best, uh, I should say. Let's start with the day. Um, my father, before all of this happened, my father said go in with something simple, and just be you. And so sad, so did. And everything played out well. I did it with someone that I really knew that was really close and we got along very well. And in the ending, a performance well done. I learned how to be a gentleman, how to treat a lady, proper etiquette, how to manage myself within a working area, and how to be a gentleman altogether. Honestly, I didn't expect it because every, even myself, everyone was vouching for this one contestant to win. But when I heard he was the first runner up, and that mean that I was coming next as the winner, I was shocked. And honestly, I started to cry. The other contestants told me not to cry that I deserved it, but I was still in shock. Weeks after, I was still in shock to, to see that I was the winner of the Mr. Executive Challenge. But to say that those who knew me didn't expect it would be an understatement because they were vulging from the start that you got this, you're going to come out the winner. And so sad, so then. A lot of young people now need to hear some inspiration especially coming from their peers. Yes, it's one thing coming from adults to hear words, but when you can hear your peers saying it, it gives a different vibe. It says that if he could do this, then I could go out there and do this also. In life, we always have to take risks, whether big or small, and the outcome would then 
be dependent on how much you give into it, how much you put. So if you're up for it, if you're on the verge of joining the challenge, go for it. Don't let anyone stop you. Don't let anyone bring you down. Don't let anyone deter you. Make it your choice to succeed and to experience something that you have never experienced before. In its commitment to young persons during the National Youth Week Get Into Empowerment Workshop last September, the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, in partnership with Princess Trust International and the Barbados Ruminants and Rabbits Rearing Society, introduced a group of 20 young persons, six females and 14 males, to a six-week rabbit rearing program. We're here with Mr. Wayne Smith, Executive Director of the Barbados Ruminant Farm Services. Wayne, tell us a bit about the program on reflection. What are your thoughts and what's happening now and for the future? When I conceptualized the program, I wanted to do it in the context of the full class of the full value chain. So the youngsters were ex um, exposed to not just the hands-on rearing of rabbits, but to the other aspects of rabbit rearing that would include nutrition, marketing so they, they got to find out what would a supermarket expect of someone but the very very interesting thing was that at the same time we were conducting the program we were also engaged with the central fish processors with a project to create cited from fish, fish waste that could then be used as an additive in, in rabbit feed so the youngsters got the opportunity to actually produce silage and also to produce feed from that silage. And what's happening for the future now? Um, for the future, um, the youngsters had the opportunity to meet with the Director General of FAO and coming out of that project and that meeting, FAO has decided that they would want to work with the youngsters within a cluster to take the fish silage business to to another level so they have the opportunity not just to use it as a pilot project but now to actually use it as a part of their management and feeding program for, for the animals. So Wayne, tell us more about how did the young persons take to the program? Are any of them still involved in the program or have their own farms in operation at this point in time? There, there was a lot of excitement from the young people during the program. Um, Though there were some of them who specifically said they didn't want to be rabbit farmers, when they were introduced to things, the other aspects like the, the feed making and stuff like that, they figure that that's something that they like to do. So they too have a role to play within the whole cluster, within the whole industry. Um, so they're, so though they have grasped that opportunity. There are currently perhaps three or four who are practicing farmers with others waiting to get on board, but they just need assistance in terms, perhaps land or, you know, just the general things that they will need to, to farm, but they're very, very keen on uh, moving forward. It is important that we recognize that 90%, well not 90, about 60% of your production costs is your feed costs. And the cost of commercial feeds keep rising constantly. So it's important that farmers have methods of helping themselves so that they can keep their, their production costs down. And this initiative in terms of farmers making feed is just one of those areas. And what are some of the main ingredients or materials used in this locally made feed? There are, there, there's a range of things. There are a range of things available that can be used. And most, in most cases, a lot of stuff that might most likely be done. If you look around, there are things like sweet potato slip, there's also, even the sweet potato, uh, cassava, cassava leaves, but we also have some plants growing that are well known, but are seen as weeds. These two have a part to play in livestock nutrition. So Wayne, what can Barbadians expect moving forward with this project and the opportunities for young people? FAO has committed to working with clusters of youth to, to take the fish silage from a pilot project to a large-scale project that can actually make a difference.
to Barbados. And, and it can make a difference in several ways. The first one would be that our young farmers will be able to feed their animals cheaper, meaning that their profit margins can be a little better. Second thing is that we will now have a positive impact on the environment because we're dumping tons of fish waste daily in Barbados. So we can di direct a lot of that from the landfill. And in direct correlation to that, the, the cheaper food means that we may very well be able to be a little more self-sufficient in, in, in feeding ourselves because we've always been hearing that it is cheaper sometimes to import food than, than to grow it here. So if, if we can bring the production costs down by using local in inputs, then that has an impact at that level as well. Looking for employment or experience? Are you 18 to 24 years old? The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment Pathways program is for you. Pathways provides you with soft skills, life skills, work experience and other support mechanisms. For a warm month, you will be exposed to sessions in areas of personal development skills, soft skills training and an eight week job attachment and one month of review and separation. How can you benefit? Some of our personal development skills include self-awareness, self-confidence, effective communication, CV writing, as well as stress and anger management, which will all assist you in preparing for the world of work. For more information on the Pathways program, please contact the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment at 535-3835. You can also email us at pathways at barbados.gov.bb. Hall in Christchurch. It has been a pleasure as always to encourage you to stay connected and to keep up to date. You can do this on Instagram by following the Community Development Department at Comdev Barbados, the Division of Youth Affairs at Div Youth 246, the Sports Development Unit at sportsdevelopment.bb, the National Sports Council at NSC Barbados, the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat at Community Independence 246 and the Barbados Youth Advance Corps at Barbados Youth Advance. You can also stay connected on Facebook by visiting Community Development Department, Division of Youth Affairs, National Sports Council and the Community Independence Celebration Secretariat or feel free to call us at 535-3835. Thank you for tuning in to our program. And see you next week.